having a chat in the middle of a pause. It's a no-go. No-go, guys. Yeah, I think he was typing, so... Yep. Of course, that ban being taken away from Curse Academy. And we will see if it does impact their pick ban stage. We'll see whether that is indeed impactful. Curse Academy. Uh, it begins, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it's game three. It's game four. Okay, we've gotten pretty far. Let's be honest. Okay. Countdown has started. We'll see what Curse Academy decide to go with. Of course, there has been a lot of Syndra focus, a lot of Alistair focus. There's been a lot of pretty standard bans, but now that there's one missing, one of those champions may actually have to get through, and I have a feeling it could potentially be the Syndra. Yeah, well, Kane does play Syndra, so they can yeah. let that go through, although it would mean giving up an Orianna pick, um, which could be in CLG's favor, honestly, because they ran the team comp last time that kind of had Orianna as one of the three key linchpins. Yep. So that will go through. No, no, first ban, Alistair on the side of Curse Academy. Pretty standard so far. They've been sort of the first couple of bands every time around. We'll see what CLG does decide to do. They could change it up. They could just make things completely weird, give themselves two of those really sort of strong picks, considering the fact that Curse Academy now only have two options. I mean, you can't really take out, you know, Maokai, Nidalee, Zillion, all in one all in one band, but Nidalee is still going to be taken off the board, and they still do fear that Syndra. And that is massive respect to Link, because we saw that, and he is so good on that champion. That means that they probably put Orianna above the Syndra in the picks. So if uh, Counter Legend Gaming don't ban this away, look for that to potentially yep. be the first pick. Um, although that does leave Zed up still, and we know that Link is a fantastic assassin player in his own right. We saw Zed get entirely through. Actually, Counter Legend Gaming do not want Tristana on this map at all. They probably knew that Impactful was happy to pick that one up if they were going to first pick that one, so. Intelligent play from Canalogic Gaming, not wanting to let that one through, and Riven being the hover. Uh, it's a bit of a shout out to Chris. Actually, I remember watching his stream years ago. Is that uh, Riven player? But the trees got through. Now going to be able to pick that one up. So Maokai is going to be the first lock in. CLG now have a couple of picks. See whether they actually capitalized on this loss of ban. Yeah, it's Academy. With only one hyper carry being up now, Cogmore is on the board, although... Nami Cogmore could just get locked in right now. Yeah, Lucian has been favoured over Cogmore this whole series. Oriana still up, so they have the free pick of that. Or oh, they can not give anything away. Lock in ambiguous picks like Lulu and Zillion and not show their hand whatsoever. I think they need to lock in something that's going to be able to take care of um, a Yasuo comp, because having this Maokai locked in, they've got to be thinking of that Yasuo. <laughs> Seraph. Diana Hover. Not sure whether that one's going to work. Bit of a shout out to Scara, maybe. Scara, of course, fantastic Diana player in his time. See, Ariana, definitely a worthwhile hover here. Link playing fantastically. And Lucian going to be locked in for double lift. So, not necessarily going for a late game hyperscaling carry. But uh, he's definitely been playing that Lucian to great effect. So, what does Curse Academy do? Yasuo is not a bad lane into, into Ariana. Not bad. Yasuo is a great lane into Orianna, and his wind wall just stops the ball in its place. Yep. Can really mess with shot oh, man. Waves. How about this? How about this? Rise being locked in from St. Vicious. He plays Maokai in the jungle, and we get Yasuo on key. Yeah, potentially taking away some of the counter picks there. I think they will go more standard. We do yeah, see that Kha'Zix is going through. Braum, wow, this does lend itself to a Yasuo pickup if they do go with that. And they, they feel like that Orianna definitely going in the mid lane. Seraph not going to pick up the Yasuo in the top lane. They can go all in on a potential Yasuo pick. Yeah, they definitely can at this point. And now that the Brawn's been taken away from Aphromoo, will he go back to the Thresh or will he yeah. look to pick up something new like the Nami? He could play the Leona again as well. I mean, he didn't necessarily have, you know, the best experience in that first game. They did drop that one, but... In the laning phase especially, they were commanding the respect in that lane. Yeah, and his Leona always has that potential of hitting those massive, yeah. massive ultimates. And Dexter, I like his Elise. It's been played quite well in both the games that he yep. picked it up. So more than happy for him to go back to that one. He's really stepped his game up in this series, you have to say. This is the old Dexter. This is the Dexter that we know and love from over in Europe, playing for the Lemon Dogs, just schooling people across this map. He's been playing really, really well. Not necessarily schooling St. Vicious this time, but this guy, he's a veteran. He knows exactly what he's doing, and Dexter has been bringing it to him. And the Lulu left open again, so Seraph going to be able to pick that one up in the top lane against Chris on this Maokai, and that's a difficult matchup for Maokai. 
yes, particularly early, it just is a lame bully against yeah. a fairly passive lane. However, he can sustain through it with his passive. And this is the another protect the double lift comp. However, just with him on Lucian, Lucian yeah. still has a fantastic mid game, so they can potentially get this rolling even earlier. Augment another AD carry, and they just obviously have faith in this comp. Oh, impactful picking up the. Looking at the Corky. And that sort of lens is still. I just want the Yasuo so bad, I'm not going to lie to you. Just because he does so much mixed damage, you know, you can still pick up that Yasuo into it, but we'll see whether it actually does come through. Of course, Keen could be playing that Corky. Impactful also fantastic on that champion. We saw those Phosphorus bombs really, really strong. And the Ziggs being the hobby here, another area of, con of effect control champion potentially for Keen. See whether that is going to be the lockdown. That means that their siege potential in the Ziggs portion of that pickup is going to be really, really strong. See what they do decide to go with. It is going to be locked in. So Corky and Ziggs now for Curse Academy going for really safe lanes in that mid lane. That's just going to be a bomb fest. Yeah, and Impactful could potentially look for a lane swap in this as well. He matches up against Lulu so much better. Yep. Send the support in Braum with Chris, and he's going to be able to farm completely unharassed. And then you get similar power curves out of your AD carries. Of course, Corky transitioning into the mid game with that Trinity Force into maybe a Bloodthirster or an Infinity Edge just has so much burst. Oh, yeah. So maybe that's their answer to this mid game carry that's going to have so much protection. Not to mention the fact that their team fight is very strong, but having Keen on the Ziggs instead of the Orianna here, I mean, the Twisted Advance with the ball combo is not necessarily, I mean, is probably stronger than that of, that of Ziggs, just throwing out a whole bunch of bombs there. But Mega Inferno Bomb late game does so much damage, and we've, we've been seeing that. Janna being picked up! What? What? What though? <laughs> Maybe a shout out to his old support player in Yan Yuan, who was a fantastic he Janna was player. He was a player. Uh, but that's a great pickup. Can obviously get rid of the Malphite. The Malphi. disengage coming out of this team is stupid. Yeah, the right card now. ability with the culling. And of course, if at any point Impactful tries to dive in with Braum yep. and go super aggressive, they can just completely disengage the team fight, as you said, leading themselves to the fact that. This could once again go very, very late. They've yeah, got we, two we, great we actually, short comps. We actually just saw Double Lift there as well, sort of indicating to his team, expressing himself with his hands. And I think he was saying, don't ever let me die and we could win this game. <laughs> I think that was potentially what it was because it makes a lot of sense to me because they've got shields up the wazoo. There are just shields everywhere. Janna shield, of course, Command Protect. You've got the shields coming out of Lulu as well. It's going to be ridiculous. He's going to have so much more protection now. And he's on Lucian, who inherently has a lot more self-peel as well with that Relentless Pursuit that has its ability to get less cooldown. And we've seen how Double Lift builds Lucian with all that AD yeah. and crit. So adding the Janus Shield on top of that is just going to make that hit so much harder. And the Light Slinger passive in the early game is going to chunk people. Oh, yeah. Not to mention the fact that he's going to have, yeah, the, the shield that does augment his AD. So, see whether he makes it work. Of course, Double If now trying his hand at just prop up the Lucian as opposed to prop up the Tristana. Let's see how many quadra kills we're going to get into this game. Keen immediately tries to kill his own Nexus. Fantastic. But we are under the rift, of course. Curse Academy on our blue side and CLG wearing the red shorts at this stage. And Curse Academy still with match point in this best of five series. But CLG fighting to hold on to their spot. And I don't think anyone could understand an LCS that doesn't have CLG here in North America. Definitely not one of the founding teams. They've been massive since Season 1. And once again, the standard setup. There's yep. been absolutely no Level 1 action Impactful this whole series. A little bit forward. Just hanging out. It's the face-off. Impactful hiding behind it. Stop looking at me, man. Sapling going to come through, going to chase Dexter down just a little bit. Oh, he gets hit by that one. He's a little bit out of range, gets a little bit upset. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. Aphromo on this Janna, though, I'm very excited to see this happen because that is so many shields. And, well, it looks like they're actually being pincered here. This could be dangerous. Yeah, there's Winter's Bite. That's only one more auto attack, and Aphromo could potentially be stunned up here. He does, but does have the shield. Forced to actually scale that one up early. I believe. May have wanted to take the Tornado, but they're all going to be okay. Yeah, I think he would have wanted to take the Shield anyway, just for okay. the early game damage that he can put out in that harass. Um, Ziggs does so much deceptive damage level one with that yeah, passive. Yeah, the short fuse. Yeah, it just comes out so hard. And of course, the spam ability of his bouncing bomb. So 
little bit of a sticky situation, but it looks like they're going to be fine. Standard lanes are coming across, so no lane swap, although it looks like there might be a late invade on the blue side. And I feel as well Keen on this Ziggs has a little bit more playmaking potential as well. Able to really, you know, set up these mines in the right positions in order to get his team to victory. And that having a massively impactful ultimate, no pun intended, is really, really important, I think, for King because he's so good at getting them in the right places. And it looks like Curse Academy do want to try and pressure this blue buff, although Bunny's taking a lot of damage, and they might have thwarted that straight up. Yeah, he walked back really, really nicely to make sure that Curse Academy can get in position for the flash being forced immediately from Double Lift. Really respecting the Brawn passive from that Winter's Bite. And uh, that's very, very dangerous. Yeah, however, Impactful did miss, I think, two creeps of CS there, so... Two creeps for a flash does mean that level 2 will be hit a little bit later. St. Vicious able to solo this buff out quite healthy with taking that W first up. Yeah. He'll be fine in the jungle. And I think it's the top lane as well. Oh, he smited straight up. So, no, he actually took a much more damage than I thought, but he's still okay. Yeah, I think he's going to survive. He will survive. He will, as long as he knows how to live, he spawn. <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's just not do that. Chris in this top lane. How do you think he's going to fare against Seraph on this Lulu? The lane bully. Is the tree going to be okay? does have a lot of inherent sustain, of course, with his passive. Well, starting Flash just means that early on in the game, he can push that wave up as well. As soon as they hit level 2, going aggressive with that shield. And we just see how much that Light Slinger passive does do. Oh my goodness. Everyone believes in the comeback 3-2 victory for CLG. 85% to 15. That's all we like here. The comeback story. Now double lift. Oh, nice relentless pursuit into the piercing light. He can do that whenever he wants and just gets the shield every time. And personally, for this game alone, I'm with yep. the fans. I want to see this go to a game five. This has been so epic so far. And what more could you ask for? CLG back against the wall, showing up yep. huge in a game and now looking to do it again in a this very This is what we were expecting. Comp. The last three best of fives that we've had with CLG. We'll see whether they can pull it out with this one, of course already with a 300 gold lead. Oh, they've got it. I reckon they've got it. <laughs> it does look like they're having a good time in this bottom lane. So, double if having no problem farming at all. Chris is holding the top lane, looking for a gank. St. Vicious did sneak into that brush, and the amount of CC that comes out of Maokai at level 3 means that they can definitely go for this one. Although, Seraph playing nice and safe. Not much going to be happening here, I don't think. Yeah, St. Vicious did, of course, go back. Oh, no, he didn't. He cancelled his back. We got a little bit cheated, didn't we, guys? That's the vision, but everything is going to be A-OK. -okay. Takes a creep for himself. I love <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Like, I spent all this time up here. I'm getting something for my troubles. Yeah, it's like taking a chip from the bowl, you know? I'm just on the way past, man. That's fine. The drive-by. He has gone back to his jungle, and we're once again just seeing the harass that can come out of this bottom oh, line. Wow. Nicely played by Double Lift, immediately reacting to the Phosphorus Bomb, and Impactful is taking a lot of damage here. We saw his Corky earlier on and not having the impact that it was having then. And they just look very confident. Wow, and Seraph's actually oomph, so he's in a little bit of trouble, and Saint's back. Yeah, the Twisted Advance coming through. He has no mana. There's the instant flash follow from Saint Vicious. He wants to get the auto attack down for the slow, but unable to do so, and Seraph survives. And he's going to be able to just teleport back. Full of mana. He probably would have wanted to back then anyway. Yeah, exactly right. I wanted to back anyway, guys. As Impactful <laughs> actually gets chunked, they might get dope here. Yeah, Aphromoo playing very far forward. Double lift as well. CLG really demanding respect in this bottom lane. It has been happening, though. I mean, CLG's bottom lane has been faring quite well in the early game. You can imagine you can't count Curse Academy out just yet. Nice unbreakable from Bunny Fuku. Stop a bit of harass, but it's not really working that well. And now that it's on cooldown, that means they have to abandon this because next wave, that won't be back up, and they're in a lot of trouble of getting dove right now. Oh, oh just God. missing. That was a gimme. I'm not sure whether that actually works as far as swapping over from Australian slang, but that would just, it should have hit, is what I meant. Saint is here to pick up a lot of this experience, and <laughs> Bunny making sure the wave isn't pushed too hard, so. Potentially impactful is back for this wave as well, but a 15 CS advantage already. And this is what we saw when these duos went head to head. Just a massive CS lead being accrued by Double Lift once again. Yep, and I think Keen and Link in this mid lane, almost both with basically perfect CS at this stage. One extra here on the side of Link. Not bad. Oh, Mega Inferno Bomb coming through. Going to clear out the wave. Give him a free back as well. So, so far, pretty 
calm, collected play. I imagine we're going to be waiting until about around that 10 minute mark when people really start to fight for these dragons. Unless Dexter wants to go for another sneaky early one, but you can see Curse Academy with a couple of wards down that southern side. And St. Vicious now he is actually around the Tribush area. Actually, in his dragon, he's got a ward just coming through exactly the right time from Dexter. With the back of the bottom lane, that was so sneaky from the side of Curse Academy, trying to use Rom to get over there. Although impactful now has been caught out, he takes half his health yep. in like two abilities. Yep, two abilities, two passive procs, and that's just the power of Janna. Everyone had a, a shield. No, it's not. It's mostly just Lucian. I want to know if he does go for the uh, Magia's build that we've been seeing in Korea. Of course, Janna being yeah, an true. extremely safe support. Able to disengage, play from afar, so not much risk of dying there. And does with AP, the shield just scales so well. Oh, yeah. Not to mention the fact that that tornado, if you leave it for a while, does start doing a lot of damage. I think we've all played an ARAM before. We know that Janet is incredibly annoying. Impactful now, managing to answer back fairly well on the aggressive movements from Doublelift. Now landing a Phosphorus bomb. And they're using uh, that proc, of course. Killing those creeps just gives them so much sustain in that lane. So using that to great effect, it does look like Link has picked up a pink ward for himself. So sweeping yeah. that one out. Yep, nailed it. And the other thing as well is the fact that Double If he's only got a Doran's bait. He hasn't actually been back yet. And Impactful still unable to trade as effectively as this Lucian. Again going in for that combo, dodging the Phosphorus Bomb now as well. And you can see, doesn't even blow all the shield. Yeah, they're just waiting for their opportunity. As soon as they see Bunny leave the lane, Impactful has to back right away because they're completely zoning him at this point. Level 6 has been reached by Double Lift, so that means he can cull the next wave, go back, not lose any CS, and pick up his first big item. Oh, and you can see, as the blue's gone for over here by St. Vicious and Keen, the dragon be being start up here for CLG, utilizing the fact that they are on that red side. Mega Inferno bombs up, and the teleport's coming in. Yeah, not going to be able to take the dragon, but look at that Mega Inferno bomb. Actually not going to hit anyone. Really nice repel. That's going to go straight on to Bunny Fufu as well. CLG are out of this one. Chris wanted to try and get in, but that disengage was phenomenal. Yeah, we spoke about the disengage. The Janna Tornado that came oh, through just yeah. completely stopped that whole pursuit. Fantastic work picking up a 1,000 gold lead, nearly 2,000 gold lead at only nine minutes. That's a fantastic start for CLG. This is not the CLG we've been watching as well. This is calculated play, and they know exactly what they want to do, and they're not taking unnecessary risks as well. Really, really well played. And I think this is what they want to do from the start. And this is what Skara mentioned as well. If they get to do these, these type of team comps, then Things are looking good. Yeah, and the 30 CS advantage in the top lane, we kind of left them up there on their island, but wow, Chris is being completely shut down by Seraph. He's being so annoying. And even when he engages, he doesn't do that much damage at this point. Yeah, he doesn't even have that catalyst built up just yet. Of course, Seraph, once Chris gets off all of his CC and his rotation, not really quite able to offer as much. Twisted Fans up again, and they're just going to keep fighting. St. Vicious is here now, though. Manages to get the slow. And look at the flash timing. He's only just about to get it back up. But Dexter's here. Lands the cocoon. Stops that one from coming through. That flash just came off cooldown. Yeah, doesn't want to pursue any further. Dexter a little bit low on mana. And of course, with isolating yourself against a Kha'Zix, he just does so much upfront burst damage. You don't want that to happen. As we see, once again, this bottom lane going super aggressive. Yeah, Double Lift stopped, not even caring about that Phosphorus Bomb anymore. Managing to cull them out of this lane. Just asserting his dominance. Yeah, he's and he's doing. picked up a BF Sword and a Crit Cloak against only a Sheen at this point. Yeah. And bits of a Phage. Bits of a Phage. Bits of a Phage. But just the AD that's coming through, as well as the Janna Shield with some Crit, is going to... If he gets the RNG proc that he's looking for, yeah. that could completely swing this lane. Even further. In fact, 21 CS. Exactly right. We'll see whether Impactful can get to that Trinity Force spike as quickly as possible. Of course, when you do decide to go for that Infinity Edge, he can spike a little bit slower. So maybe Impactful can find that window. Oh, nice damage actually back onto Afro Moon now. Of course, that Impactful has hit that level 6 mark. Now has those rockets in his arsenal. And be putting these wars down. Chris now still under fire. He just feels like he's just getting harassed over and over again. Having Bad time. And it's drawing Saint to the top lane repetitively whilst there's four members on CLG's side we converging all know how to the bottom lane. Can dive as well. Nice Cocoon's gonna land. There's the exhaust as well. So textbook this play. Link's down here at the same time. First blood. 
with the dissonance. Bunny Foo Foo now is wondering what the heck went wrong in his life. And he's going to go down as well. Look at the shields coming through under double lift already. It's only 12 minutes into this game and already those shields are gigantic. And they're going to be able to push into this tier 2 turret as well. You can't underestimate how much damage double lift currently does to structures. And Megan Bernabon Bernabon does come through, clears that one out. But an ultimate down, two kills on the side of CL, uh, CLG, yep. and such a calculated dive. The path that Link took then to completely cut off the retreat was beautiful. Absolutely perfect. And the timing in which they came in, the minion wave comes in. Dexter comes in from the side. Link finds his way around and, look, took no damage on his mid lane turret as well. So he didn't waste any time getting into that bottom lane. That was orchestrated so, so well by CLG. Keen, Keen does manage to answer with a pink ward. So hell yes. But other than that, CLG have had complete control this game. Bunny Foo Foo. Oh wow, using his shield to protect <laughs> the ward. Uh, almost manages to do it. There's a cocoon actually landing. Dexter saying, look, I'm the jungle, you're the support, buddy. <laughs> Got this one. But no, St. Vicious is here. Land and support a hand. Look at the wards from CLG on the bottom side of the map. You can see oh, yeah. exactly why that dive was possible, ensuring they weren't being followed down there by Keen in the mid lane and just allowing themselves all the vision and knowing whether they can go for the dive or not. Beautifully set up. And at this point in the game, at 3,000 gold lead, it's pretty massive. Exactly. And you've also got the fact that Double Lift just inherently ahead anyway in his lane. Now has two assists to his name. Of course, it's helped out Link and Dexter as well. And they can translate this all across the map. And Seraph just inherently is decimating this top lane. Yeah, and I think he's the unsung hero of that dive, actually. He was the one that drew St. Vicious to the top yeah. lane. He's the one that's got the massive CS advantage, 40 CS now. And he's just... Chris looks, from game one and two, oh, completely yeah. different to game three and four. Seraph's done an amazing job. Really keeping him down this matchup. And another ward is going to go down. CLG just... Counting their dollars at this stage, they know that they're ahead, waiting for this dragon to come up. 50 seconds on that one, and you can see they've already got so much vision around there. They do need to do a bit of cleaning, of course. First Academy have a bit of vision, a few wards, but you can see just the pinks there, everything's available for CLG. They can probably just go around and grab And now they're roaming to the mid lane, looking to pick up another team fight, and they are overextended. Dexter just missing. dodged three skill shots just then. Oh, Aphromoo with the Black Monsoon! Keen unable to start. It was a ridiculous tornado as well. The culling coming down, but unable to lock down Keen. Chris now in amongst everything. He's going down solo. Afromu picks up a well-deserved kill. Winter's Bite comes back, but I thought Keen was definitely dead throughout that one just because of the incredible layering of CC. Yeah, and what an aggressive play out yeah. of Afromu. I said that John has normally played from the back. Honestly, obviously, I don't know anything because that was so <laughs> mammo. Just put the carry shorts on and he went for it. They've started up Dragon now. Shock Looks like is down. Academy still want to fight. Yeah, maybe it may not be that easy, of course. Teleport's down. Dex is coming through. A double it with a massively aggressive play. Key now is the focus of his tirade. Look at this guy. So many shields. There's the wild growth as well. Impactful goes down. Double it picks up that kill. And this guy has put his team on his back these last two games. And they've found the comp that has all the answers. Able oh, to get yeah. all the shields, the ultimate onto double lift. Picking up another This is objective. what he said he couldn't do. In that video, he said, you can't just carry a game. <laughs> yes, he is. Look at him. Look at him go. So able to funnel even more farm. He's got a 30 CS lead still and going to be able to go back, pick up that infinity edge. Yep. And with the shield, from Janna just going to be tearing through turrets as we see this team fight again. He just goes over the wall with the ball, gets altered. That was a good run. Flashes in, and then the uh, exhaust comes out from impact, which is making it impossible for him to run away. Able to clean up another kill, and with the blue buff, he's going absolutely berserk. He certainly is, of course. Now, Curse Academy's top lane out of turret, very, very low. Seraph doing a lot of work there, and now 5 to 0 in kills. This is a completely different CLG. And they are, this is still match point for Curse Academy, but man, CLG is so much, they look so much more hungry at this stage. Yeah, and we went over it in the first two games. Keen is so comfortable on Ariana oh, that yeah. he looks like it's a separate tier for him in particular. Yep. He just looks like he can farm beautifully on it. Although he still has a 10 CS lead, he just doesn't look like team fight wise. He has the same impact in the 5v5 fights. It might be the comp that they prefer to run, but 
picking that away has definitely been key for CLG building what is a 6,000 gold lead at 16 minutes. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't think it's necessarily... You can't really say that Curse Academy have done something wrong. I think it's a lot to do with CLG just playing this game out so incredibly well. And especially, I mean, that gank in the bottom lane was fantastic. Yeah, just beautiful awareness and decisive calls coming Again, out of look at, as well. Wow, we're getting caught out of the Valkyrie there as well. Forced to use that flash. Say Vicious now getting culled through and just commanding control of this inner turret. And this is going to be another turret falling potentially, as well as the top laner being so low. Yeah, Link finds his way in here as well. There's the Q from Dexter. They are going to be able to kill this turret. Bunny Fru Fru may be caught out here just a little bit. The Glacial Fissure in the wrong direction. It could be the nerves. They're feeling it. They're feeling the pressure. They certainly are. And Seraph's going to be able to pick up this top turret as well. 8,000 gold advantage. at 17 minutes 20 into this minutes. Game. Wow. And there's two, practically three turrets at this point in the mid lane. We'll see whether CLG can siege these ones down. Of course, double lift on Lucian. Fantastic. And getting damage on these turrets, even if his range isn't quite as high. Look at that layering of shields. Just happy to walk up, yep. base tank it for the duration of the shields. Now the minion wave's coming through. They can just, once again, Mega Inferno Bomb does come down. But being able to siege against a Ziggs with any comp is just crazy. St. Vicious actually finds Seraph. Nice little lance in order to get him to safety and leap is on cooldown. We'll see whether the Twisted Advance is going to be going, there. They might be... Oh, yeah, great rotation from CLG there, helping their top laner out. They're just doing everything right. This does not look like the CLG. And they're so well. coordinated as well. I mean, we've seen CLG talking about a lack of cohesion, but this looks like a team that is all together. They're all on the same page. And they're playing like everything's on the line. As a nice satchel charge, well, it is. does come out of Keen. I was about to say that. <laughs> Keen interrupted me. Of course, they're playing for everything. This is for a spot in the LCS, guys. And you have to say, they've turned it on at exactly the right moment. Yeah, well, if you're going to turn it on, like it has to be when it counts. And I guess when it's match point from you being booted out of the LCS, I mean, it's a bit late, but thank goodness it's happened. So we do see that it's actually calmed down a little bit. And the gold advantage, wow, double lift. Oh, as we have a gank yeah, on Seraph. Yeah, Seraph getting launched out here, the Twisted Advance. But that's all of the CC down, and they can't necessarily tank this turret out, especially if it's St. Vicious doing so. It's not a tanky Kha'Zix at this stage. Wild Growth now, of course, on cooldown. And they're sending four members from Curse Academy up here, but it's matched completely on the side of CLG. Looking to pick up those wards. And yeah, nice look at the again. confidence they're playing with. So true, and for Aframu just to pick up Janna, he's been making so many calculated plays. It looks like he's been playing Janna all split, but he has. <laughs> and we see the double lift is a full, I guess, core item in the static shiv ahead of Impactful on Corky. He's up to a nearly a 60 CS advantage, and he's still pushing this bottom lane. He's at the point of the game where he's got his turtle shell on. He can just completely yeah. hard carry. You know, do the best he can, and especially with yeah those turtle shells being made up by shields from every member of his team, apart from Dexter. But you know he can be you know spider shield. And the Magi oh, has come there out on Afromu. That's all we're talking about. So maybe no more flash in plays. Although yeah. I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> but looking to consolidate that lead, Dragon is up in 30 seconds. They've got complete vision control. That's a lot of wards. Yeah. That's, um, they definitely wanted vision of that red. That is a gold mine over there. Like, don't <laughs> even go for dragon. Oh, that's, just that's sweep just that bait. area. That's just bait. Someone has to take a long time to clear out those wards. <laughs> and they have to use double sweepers, I think, if they want to do it with one person. Definitely. So, maybe it's a strategy. Pretty sure it isn't. It? And it does look like Curse Academy will give up this dragon. Saints going back on the top side of the map. That's up now, respawning. So their gold lead is just going to get even bigger at 20 minutes. Nearly going to be a 10,000 gold advantage on the side of CLG. So much map control. And as you said, 21 minutes. And the statistics for winning a game with a 10,000 gold lead at 20 minutes are pretty good. Just to say the least. Chris now actually doing a lot better in this top lane. And he's down 30 CS, but at least he's able to farm, not getting pressured out too much from Seraph, who is about to finish that Rabidon's death cap. But 33 CS lead, still pretty good. Yeah, and a very calculated game coming out of uh, Canalogic Gaming. We're seeing that they're not 
forcing when they don't have the members there. They're happy to pick up the free objectives that they've yep. been given to them. Go back and shop. Now they'll group back up and look to make another play with all of their ultimates available. Just really well played across the whole board. And you can see Double Lift now moving to the top lane. Spotted the fact that there is a wave crashing into a turret. He's going to move up there, and you can see CLG answering this one impactful now. Finds Aphromoo just a little bit. Oh, Chris in a lot of trouble. The culling coming through onto him. That was potentially C St. Vicious and the rest of the crew hanging out there, so they're not going to go too much deeper. Aphromoo is going to find that sapling in the brush. And with the teleport available, they're moving Seraph into the lane that's A, furthest away from Baron because they have such a huge lead that at any point, Baron yep. is definitely a possibility. They can start baiting that right now, as well as the fact oh, that... Oh, nice. The steal away from the Wraith. I think Curse Academy are now ahead. <laughs> There's only an inhibit turret uh, available bottom lane, as opposed to top lane, where there is still that outer that is so much harder to defend yeah. at this point in the game. So, once again, great movements around the map. And yeah, looking to push their effect. advantage. Yeah, they really are. And they're making sure that they're clearing out these waves as quickly as possible as well. We'll get another shield. Taking a tower shot, because he can. They'll be setting up for the siege. In fact, look at that static shift. That crit doing so much damage. Nice cocoon going to land on the bunny. St. Fish is trying to add his poke to the mix as well. Curse Academy want to make something of this. There Rocket is a teleport coming, coming in from behind. Yeah, we do have the teleport coming in from Chris. Is he going to be able to get the Twisted Advance onto Double if they need to shut him down early on? He's been caught up. Is he going to die here? The Wild Growth comes through. Look at all the shields. Curse Academy are trying to get onto him. The Culling's there as well. They've wasted everything on Double if He's still on half health. CLG's here. Links on the other side. Three more. Shockwave. The Dissonance destroying the AD carry. Everyone on Curse Academy is melting. Keen's wondering where the heck his team went. Trying to kite through. CLG, there's the cocoon. Keen's going to go down. That's the ace, and that's going to be Baron. And look at the disengage that comes out of the team oh fight from goodness. CLG. Both directions. Link able to kite back on his side as a solo person, hitting a three-man shockwave. And then it looked like Double Lift was caught, and then he was back to half health yeah. with all of the shields on him again. Baron picked up. 15,000 gold advantage, and look at the teleport that comes through. All right, let's go back through this. It was a nice start to the fight. They had the right idea. However, as soon as they get double lift that wild growth, all the shields and the kiting backwards, they just used too much on him already. The culling came through, and this is where they go aggressive. Link is behind them, hits a beautiful shock wave in about two seconds. There it is. Boom, that goes through, and then just Way too much damage coming out on the side of CLG. The gold lead at this point is just too high. And this is what I love about the play. Dexter, you could go at this point, let's go Baron. No, he flashes forward and picks up another kill for his team. They're looking to ride the emotional high and they're looking to go to a game five. Yeah, 15,000 gold now, the lead to CLG. They're pushing through with that Baron buff at the same time. Things are looking fantastic. Look at that, zero, zero and eight now on Seraph, managing to augment double lift whenever he possibly can, now has the boots of lucidity, of course that Rabidon's death cap as well, that wild growth gives him so much health, and I think that Mikhail's, did that almost come out, that would have come out just then from the, oh Seraph might have been caught here, Mega Inferno Bomb coming through, but look at this, he's just so fast, it does die in the end though. Yeah, but at what price, they use the Zigzalt so they don't have any wave clear, mid turret will fall for it, and once again, Look who's in the top lane, just pushing the wave out, getting even more gold for himself. He's nearly 100 CS up. Again, it's not even a surprise anymore having double lift 100 CS up. Just always seems to be taking the white as well as the creep wave at the same time. And this inner turret, he's just going to siege that one up himself against Chris. Yeah, and they're going to have to send two people to deal with this, try and pick him off, but he's just looking so strong. He is in double lift, by yeah. the way. And. Aphromu coming across for some support, going to throw that shield down. This turret might die in a couple of hits right now. And the rest of the team, still mid, still pushing in those waves. Exactly right. Impactful is going to answer with an outer turret in the bottom lane. Chris can use that ultimate in order to nullify a lot of that damage. But Link with the pressure in the mid lane, going to be able to steal that one away. And then eventually CLG managed to take the inner turret down as well. That's every inner turret down. And they are beginning to strangle this game. Some annoying. Six bombs go at exactly the right time. Keen gets chunked to half health. Piercing Light almost finds the target as well. And look at the shields on Double Lift. He's still on, not anymore, but he was on full health. Look at all the Whoa. shields. <laughs> There's yep. just so much protection for this AD carry. So they've proven that they can run it with two. 
Different ADs. Yep. Because Dana gets banned by CLG. They don't want to go against it. But able to pick up Lucian and run the exact same comp with pretty much mirrored results, if not better. We'll see whether they can manage to get this turret on this next maneuver. Of course, only a third health left on it. There's Mega Inferno Bomb. Has, in fact, come back up. And Ziggs is fantastic for clearing out these waves. I feel like CLG might have to use a few of those shields on maybe someone a little bit tankier, but that would probably be Dexter if it's going to be anyone. Try and tank that one up because wave clear is not an issue for Kurt's Academy. Yeah, but it's only 27 minutes into the game, so they can just pick up one turret. They don't even necessarily have to fight here as... Wow! Oh Link my. just blows up King. Well, that happened. And that's going to be the wave clear taken care of. So CLG definitely know exactly what to do. Push into the base, take the inhibitor. And Link this might be so even more. Damage, I don't think right? they can even stop this if they keep going. Dragon is live, so they might choose for that, but look at the shields on Double Lift. Double Lift has more than his whole health bar in shields at that stage. Happy to tank that one up. Oh, Chris taking so much damage. There's the piercing light. The culling coming through. That's going to pick up that kill. Seraph now tanking this turret up. And Super Creeps haven't even entered the base yet, and they're sieging the Nexus turrets. Monsoon used just to heal them back up again. And with Baron, they're going to have no problem staying healthy. First Nexus turret goes down. CLG are looking to bring this to a game five. We'll see what the funny Fubu gets taken down so low. St. Vicious, no. The Nexus is under fire. CLG are bringing it to two games apiece. And now anything could happen. Double if wants more kills. Doesn't even want to hit this Nexus. The Light Slinger takes it down. We are going to game five, ladies and gentlemen, with CLG against Curse Academy. What a perfect game. Nearly flawless in their movement. 6-0 and 7. Double lift once again coming up huge, but props to Seraph in the top lane. Oh, yeah. Drawing so much attention to himself. Had that massive CS lead at the start, and he just dictated the pace of the game by being this massive lane bully. And not to mention Aphromoo as well on this Janna. Picking up Janna is not something that you'd ever expect in this region particularly and then having such an impactful performance as well, not afraid to make the plays, and that dive in the bottom lane as well. It's just a completely different CLG that have so much control. Yeah, and now they're two apiece, but they've won the last two games, looking to ride that momentum into game three. They must be on such a high. Oh, yeah. And it's, as I said, it couldn't be funneled through a better uh, person just because how important Double List is to yeah. this team. If he's happy and playing well and they're loud over the comms, the whole team's just going to bring together and act like a unit. And that's what we saw this game. Yeah, and we saw the fact that even earlier on, we mentioned the fact that he was indicating to his team, he was communicating, and the worst thing to do is to be silent. And that was at a time when they were like feeling the pressure of Curse Academy and they've rallied in that situation. So that really shows their veteran status and CLG really want to hang on to this. Yeah, definitely. Game five, though, everything's on the line oh, now. 